We will be talking basically pure endgame from this point on, so anybody who does not want spoilers, I would suggest covering your ears or just le leaving at this point. So, that being said, anybody who wishes to stay and participate in our in this group discussion is more than welcome to. We'll be uh, reading through any comments you might have on chat as well during this segment. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an open discussion basically right now. The thing is, I'm, I'm not going to get the conversation started. You, you guys talk. Well, what were you I'll... saying about, because I kind of wanted to tag on, tag on to what you were saying about when uh, Thanos comes in, he time travels, right? Like, was there yeah. you getting to something? Yeah, okay. He blows the fuck out of that Avengers uh, Avengers HQ, yeah. HQ, wherever it is. And then, yeah, Hulk was... It seemed like Ant-Man had more to do with, like, picking all that stuff, the rubble off, than the Hulk did. But see, here's like... the thing, though, about that. That was right after the sna the, the unsnap, you know? He he basically, he, he had se been severely damaged by the Infinity Gauntlet when he unsnapped the snap. Mm -hmm. So... That's why he wasn't able to really participate in the final battle, or why he may have seemed a bit on the weaker side when he was protecting the other Avengers from getting crushed under the rubble. <clears throat> I had a question. Help me clarify or, like, understand this timeline bit. So, like, everyone has the Pym juice in the little vials, and that helps them go back and forth between time, right? So when they're going back and forth and then they come back into present day and then you have evil Nebula who is bringing back Thanos through the machine, but wouldn't he also need the Pym Juice to come through? Well, there, there's a bunch of theories on this. One of my favorites is, well, I mean, he's Thanos. He's he's from space. He's got all this advanced technology around him. He could probably very easily just recreate the Pym particles yeah, himself. Yeah, I think he, I think he had a sample of it. Right? Yeah, he did that, from from yeah, Nebula. Nebula. He he got a sample of it, and he he probably has a way of just like, oh, we could just duplicate this. I don't care what the hell this is. Because yeah, that was of. like we'll my thought process it. is there had to have been something going on that we just didn't see, in like that he was able to do it. But they didn't like actually show it. But we're it was all that it was all happening. under assumption, you know. Uh huh. You see, like Thanos getting handed one of those vials, and he's just looking at it, and then it's like yeah. once once you see Thanos holding that, it's just like one way or another, he's gonna find his way back into the future, chase after like whatever he has to do. Yeah. So, and, from one, he made many. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, he stretched it, whatever. It's kind of like how uh, Tony and... Uh, not like, like, Tony and Cap went back in time and took the Pym Particles from 1970. Uh-huh. Yeah. Pym may not be That's around true. to make more in the present day, but he's... He's there in the past, and hey, we can go back and snag him from there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we know that they can be made and manufactured and stuff like that. So is it really that far of a stretch to think? Oh well, Thanos got his hands on him, obviously, because he sent his Nebula back in place of the Nebula that went there. Mm -hmm. So is it really that far of a stretch to think that maybe he made more? Uh, yeah, like, I mean, I don't think. Yeah. But, uh, so, an interesting thing, we, we've been getting, like, they've been dumping behind-the-scenes stuff, and there's been a bunch of interviews since the, since, mainly since the, uh, the, the, the spoiler ban lifted. Basically, everybody's been posting behind-the-scenes videos and pictures and stuff like that. Uh, all the cast has been doing this, um... But uh, the Russo brothers were talking about how the movie originally 
the, the final battle originally ended was Thanos said, I am, in, I am inevitable, and then mm -hmm. snaps his fingers, and then Iron Man, he didn't say anything. That was the original yeah. ending. Now, that was originally how Tony Stark went out, was he, he just didn't say anything, just stared back at Thanos and snapped his fingers and erased him without saying a thing and it actually was uh like later on in the editing room like we, sh should we really go with this should we do this he should say something he's he, he's known for quips and stuff like that he's known for his back talk it's tony stark for christ's sake uh and then one of the editors said uh, why not i am iron man and they're like that's brilliant, and so they, <laughs> they 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 had to go back and they they reshot the scene and yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dope. I like that choice. I am inevitable. I am <laughs> Iron Man. Man. <laughs> Enough said. Um, but yeah, and also this is, this is an interesting piece of trivia for you. The the sound stage where that last scene was filmed the the last scene for the final battle where the 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 snap the, the last snap happens uh -huh. was uh right next to the sound stage where Robert Downey Jr auditioned for Iron Man oh wow that's interesting <laughs> so yeah that's that's like the beginning and the end, you know? Yeah, basically like a full circle. And oh. I, I I am getting really pissed off at some of our fellow YouTube YouTubers putting up all these videos about how Iron Man can come back. Like how we can still there there's there, we can still get Tony Stark in uh in future movies and I'm I'm getting pissed off at him because no he had his ending like I, I understand that in some of the comic books there's an AI version of Tony a, a holographic AI version of Tony and but no Robert Downey Jr. is out he doesn't want he 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 had his emotional like humbling end and he he want and he's that he's that's it no more like, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it, it comes down to the actor really. And if they're just done and they're out and that's their deal, then it is what it is. Just like let he, it rest. He, he he is fine with how Tony went out, and he doesn't want to make it more, make it harder, make it more emotional than it already has been by by coming back. You know, like it, it kind of ruins the entire moment too. Speaking like, of emotion, the, the, was the whole theater just totally bawling and flooding in tears? Uh, it, it, I, I know I was like, <laughs> it, 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 it got me choked up. I was, I wasn't bawling, but I was like, I was like, I, to be perfectly honest, uh, the Tony's death hit me harder than uh, Romanov's. Yeah, you know, yeah. I I knew what was coming when. Hawkeye, and Black Widow. They when they went to that place trying to get the Soul Gem, it's like only one of them's coming back. Yeah. You saw what happened with Thanos and Gamora. It's like only one of them's coming back. I, I had no idea who was gonna who was gonna die, but one of them had to die. And it's like they both loved each other. They cared for one another, and I think that's part of how that works. Like, if any one person went there, they can't leave with the Soul Gem. They have to actually bring somebody along, and then yeah. someone, has, someone has to die. And it was like, it was like just back and forth. Who's who's going to fall? Who's going to, who, everyone was saving, trying to save each other, preventing each other from dying. And it was like, They fought each other for the honor of dying. And then at the end of the day, it was just like, well, Hakai has his family has a family to go back to and she her family was like the agency you know whatever yeah she did she didn't have any family outside of like her work so that was like she was dying for her work now an interesting but, parallel was pointed out between her death and gamora's death and how uh if you were to look at the scene side by side uh 
Romanoff, Black Widow, died in the exact same position, in the exact same spot that Gamora did in Infinity War. So, mm-hmm. like, with it, with it, where they show them at the bottom of the thing where they get thrown to get the soul for the other person to obtain the soul stone they're in the exact same position in the exact same uh, spot basically interesting um yeah is there like any other meaning to that or is it just they just mm. did that. No, it, it's it, it's it's all about parallels. These two movies, they're it's all about they're all about par- the parallels. Like it, one is supposed to be a reflection of the other, you know. Yep. You know, how about okay when Loki, they they were trying to get the Tesseract in in the in that time like during. Uh, the first the Avengers f- just, movie. The, the first back, Avengers, back in, yeah, back in 2012. They, yeah, and I think Tony Stark was dressed up as a guard, like uh-huh. incognito or something, and they just, they, Ant-Man blew it, or he did something wrong, and then Loki got the Tesseract and just split. Where no, was? no, what happened was, uh, he got, he got the, uh, he got the Tesseract, he was carrying the briefcase, he was almost to the door, then Hulk bursts out of the stairwell, knocks the Tesseract, <laughs> Knock, knocks the case oh, like <laughs> knocks knocks the case out of Tony's hand which releases which once that hit the ground the tesseract was flung free landed next to Loki and Loki like put his foot on it and zapped away <laughs> um and, and it at that point it was just like okay we have no idea where he went wherever he went it's like we can't follow we got to go all the way back to 1970. Where they yeah. had the Stan Lee cameo, and like he's like old man driving with chicks, like yelling yeah. at somebody else. However, uh, there is there there is uh, some uh, uh, the leading theory right now is that that Loki thing is where the Loki TV Loki TV Disney Plus series is going to be taking place so the 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 that's going to be the wh- where we get the loki series from on disney plus is this mishap is what leads to that okay okay so loki esca- escaping that's that turns into a spinoff okay um as for the question about bringing Black Widow back when he returns the Soul Stone. We're not sure how that works. They, and they're being very, very tight-lipped about it. So, But at the same time, they've also kind of dropped hints, like Thor saying, why are you mourning her? She's not dead. When they return from the past, at, when it's just, uh, it's just Hawkeye. But... There's like some people have pointed out some lines of dialogue within the movie that hint that she's not dead. So we'll we'll see. Again, I mean, she's getting her getting her own movie. I'm bet personally, I'm betting it's going to be a prequel, but we'll see. I would assume so too. See, yeah, but, but that, that's where they get us. Like, they, they get us with, we, we assume this and that <laughs> and stuff, and then they're like, aha! Got you! <laughs> Drop the hammer. Uh, or Captain's Amer- Captain America's place, pick up the hammer. Can, okay, so that scene oh, where he oh. picks up the hammer was just so legit. Like, I could watch that over and over again. It reminded me of saying in, like, Mortal Kombat, where you have that one kid... Who keeps mashing all the fucking combo buttons just over and over <laughs> uh, okay. I, I saw a theory I saw a theory video saying that in Age of Ultron I think it was when they were all trying to pick up Thor's hammer and they couldn't make it budge at all Captain made he made it squeak he made it he kind of picked it up a little bit and, and Thor was kind of looking at him like 
basically. Yeah. You know, like, oh, like, like, oh, like, like, he, he, like uh, he's, wa- <laughs> Thor's watching all the Avengers try to pick it up. He's laughing at them uh, and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden, he Cap- heard it squeak. He Cap- heard Captain it squeak. America goes over to the hammer and it moves just slightly. The, the slightest a, bit. And there's a, a lot of people theorizing either he wasn't completely worthy at the time or the fact that he's always been worthy, but he didn't want to hurt Thor's feelings. <laughs> so, I actually, I think he didn't want to... It wasn't about hurting Thor's feelings as much. I think it was more about he didn't want to seem superior to any, any of the other humans you know morally better than any of the other humans i, I huh. he was being either way he was being humble if he was protecting yeah. thor's feelings he was be, he was being humble basically incredibly humble and but... then later on in the movie the vision just picks it up and then it's like well, the thing is after the vision picked it up he was like this man is worthy and it, whatever and it's just <laughs> like well yeah it's like would he have had the same feelings if captain america had picked it up because well see even... the thing is though I knew it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, 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 that, when he sees Captain America wielding, wielding Mjolnir, like fully wielding it, thunder and lightning and all, in uh-huh. the Avengers Endgame final battle, Thor lets out a raucous, I knew it. <laughs> you know, I have... he was excited oh. about it. How about, okay, now. I've seen it depicted in some animation that Thanos, he can't pick up Thor's hammer. I, I've seen that. I've seen it where it's like, he has the gauntlet, I think, and he still can't pick up the hammer. But he's like, oh, if I can't hit you with the hammer, um, if I can't hit the ham, if I can't pick up the hammer and hit you, I will pick up you and hit you with the hammer. So, like, the hammer's on the ground. He, like, picks up Thor and, like, smashes <laughs> Thor into the hammer on the ground. You know what I mean? It's just, okay, that was that's something. That uh, that, that, that's that. kind of like the whole in the first Avengers movie, uh, Hulk tries to pick up the hammer when Thor or Thor put Thor puts the hammer on Hulk's chest and Thor can't pick it up and stuff like that. So you see later on in the movie. <laughs> Hulk picks up Thor and starts swinging yeah. him around with the, it, <laughs> while Thor's using the hammer. <laughs> Like, I, as, if I can't wield the hammer, I'll wield you while you wield the hammer. <laughs> uh-huh. I just had this weird thought, like, what if, you know, Thanos' intentions for, you know, the genocide in, in, uh, in, the, in the cosmos, you know, it wasn't really selfish what he wanted to do. He had, like, his own twisted motives on why he, but it was, like, pure like yeah. he actually he like really sacrificed himself to do what he wanted to do to do what he thought he needed to do i was just wondering what if thanos's uh motive was so pure enough if it was pure enough that he could actually wield that thing cuz i'm not sure exactly what the prerequisites for wielding that thing is you typically would think it's it's being a good guy but think about uh Helen, helena right she, yeah. like, caught the hammer and broke it. You know, if you can catch the hammer and break it, that means you're you're worthy of something, whatever that means. Oh, Kier I points mean, she, out she, that uh, there have been times in the comic when the Hulk picks up the hammer. Comics, when he, pick, when he does pick up the hammer, he was just that strong. But to be fair, basically in the comics, everybody's, are, everybody's wielded Mjolnir at one point or the other, you know? There's been times where, at like, at one point, everybody, all the Avengers have eventually wielded Mjolnir at one point or another. <clears throat> so, everyone's worthy at some point or another, but they may not be worthy all the time. Now, yeah, back to what Ed was saying, like, what are the prerequisites? Like, how do I wield this hammer? <laughs> what do I gotta do? I mean, Helena was pretty fucking evil and she was able to grab it i mean was she i think she was more evil than i Thanos. don't I, but that doesn't count as wielding it because he threw it at her and she crushed it caught it caught it she caught it and it was like she didn't want it on the playing field anymore 
That was her attitude. I don't, want to it. I don't. I don't want. I don't want you getting this back. This thing could might. This thing might hurt me. I'm just gonna break. Remi this reminds me. Of, it reminds me of a line later on in the movie. You're Thor. You're the god of lightning, not the god of hammers. <laughs> uh, you don't need the hammer. Which is when he finally realized, oh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> and he started wielding part, lightning and stuff. Wasn't part of the plot of the first Thor movie, like, did he, like, lose the ability to use the hammer? Was that part? Of yeah, the because of he went against his father and went on, or w went to, to, I believe, the ice giants and went, and, uh, went conquering, basically, when his dad told him not to. He was, he was cocky. And his dad punished him. Some of the Marvel movies that aren't really considered, like, especially, like, great. Ah, his oh, here says his power was sealed into the hammer as a result. Uh, Zach, your camera, like, went out of focus. <laughs> okay, good now. All right. Well, it just it just reminds me that some of the, some of the Marvel movies that aren't really considered like exceptionally great, like oh top five material and stuff. It's like I haven't seen those movies in like over seven years. I you know, haven't but... seen them in a while either, so don't feel too bad. I just remember like Thor being on Earth, and he's like in a hospital. Everybody thinks he's crazy. And he's like gets like tasered and shit. Like <laughs> you know, it's like uh, how can this guy get hurt by a taser? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. To be but, fair, in Thor Ragnarok, he basically has a taser to attached to his neck that keeps him in yeah. line. So Yeah. Who would who would who would have thought? A god of yeah. thunder and lightning brought down by a taser. <laughs> and the guy who wields electricity for a living. <laughs> gets brought that it, it, it bites the hand who feeds it <laughs> so kind of speaking of like achilles heels i thought i heard something that there was supposed to be some kind of insight into captain marvel's weakness but i didn't see any of that uh the only thing i could possibly think of in reference to that was in the final battle when she finally makes her entrance blows up thanos's ship and basically goes toe to toe against thanos he punches her and she just shrugs it off then he takes the power stone off the off the glove and punches her with a power fist and knocks her uh -huh. like <laughs> a couple blocks away <laughs> That's essentially like getting hit by about as strong as anything there is. Yeah, like you she, just straight up took the it. stone of power and like, well, bam. <laughs> um, we talked earlier about how uh, Professor Hulk got hurt when the uh, when he used the Stark gauntlet to mm -hmm. unsnap the snap. And uh, the Russo brothers have confirmed, basically, that the damage done by the gauntlet is permanent. He he'll, mm. so we'll probably be seeing him with scars and stu and such like like we did with Thanos in future video future movies and stuff. Interesting. So as strong as <sighs> Iron Man, he had like his suit incorporate like the gems into it so he could do the snap mm -hmm. it was like it's just it's almost like he had it like planned ahead of time like there was like some situation well, where he could have like the gems the, can get fixed the, into that the way that that was possible is because remember he's, he's not using a metal suit anymore he's using a nanotech suit yeah, he's it's... not using a solid plate metal anymore like he was in the other in Iron Man. But movies. the way that, that that would just adapt into like the perfect. Be... Well, it I mean, is, you, is you, it, you kind it, of. I mean, it's like mind control the way that 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 just formed around. 
is well is actually stones? that that's an interesting statement because in the comics iron man has like a telepathy with machines he it, it's not something that he always had but it's a result of him messing around with nanotechnology uh, he eventually uh, that he gets he he has nano machines in his body which gives him like a machinopathy or whatever they decided like to call it the two. so he's able to believe it or not he can control all machines on the planet with in the in the comic books with the, these powers like he's able to link up with satellites he's able to link up with anything within like on earth or orbiting earth he's able to link up to them and basically control them via telepathy essentially so that could actually be a comment on that, that that could be a comment on uh, his powers, his powers in the comic really, books. His powers that weren't really explored in the died. MCU. Yeah. <clears throat> um. But yeah. So, uh, technomancy. Thank you. Um. But yeah. So that could be like a. a a, a comment on something that we never actually got to see in the MCU, which would have been way OP if if it had been introduced. <laughs> I just right. gotta say, because um, we actually did see something similar to that in Iron Man three, like when he had all the different Iron Man suits come in, like he had his, he had his AI controlling the different suits but he was able to communicate with them sort of in various ways um how about let's let's i want something i want to discuss about avenger uh avenger uh, avengers of game is uh, how fan like not thanos how the hulk got the time stone from what was hilda swan's character is called the ancient one yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the point in that conversation that she decided I need to give it to this guy was when he she had heard that Doctor Strange had given it to Thanos of his own of his own free will. Because the thing is, uh Doctor Strange he could have he could have died with what there being a spell on that that time stone and it would have been like just like locked away sealed away but before that last engagement in uh infinity war he had like used the time stone to look into the future all these different permutations and how things could go out and there were millions of different ways that there was over 14 like, million different variations and he said only one of them was right so the one that was right it Thanos winning for five years before they could actually like come back fight. But you want to know why the Russos actually have an explanation for that, and it's both stupid and hilarious at the same time. Basically, the one var variation he saw was the rat walking over the button that activated the quantum tunnel. Oh. <laughs> That was something else. I, that was like at the very beginning of the shit, man. I I didn't. I thought that was just, just out of just nothing. They just they they had to just pull something out of their ass to get the ball rolling on things. No, the the, the Russo mean, brothers have said that the real hero of of Avengers Endgame is that rat. <laughs> Because if That's that rat, so it, <laughs> I told you it was stupid, but it funny, right? The Russo brothers have officially said the the, the real hero is that rat because uh, of all the different variations that Doctor Strange saw, it all came down to Pym, well, Ant Man, and that it all came down to whether or not that rat would hit the button to release Ant Man from the quantum realm. So during wow. the events of of uh, the first Avengers movie, when it was like the Battle of New York and shit, the Ancient One 
wasn't really participating in that fight. Oh, oh, oh she was kind of like defending. She was her, defending the Sanctum Sanctorum, the but sanct other yes, than that, she that. was like shrugging off yeah. the rest of it. Yeah, and she knew about Doctor Strange, like. Like she was like, oh, he's still practicing medicine over there. You know what I mean? She's yeah. Like pointing, pointing over there somewhere, and it's like so. She, she was like clairvoyant. You're like you're like six years too early. Well, she had the time stone. So I'm just wondering, how do you think she used the time stone? Did, what kind of crazy things did she do with the time stone to see into the future like that? Boy, it it just it raises a lot of questions. Like, ancient one, did she? She didn't see how she was gonna die, or did she? Uh, wrong uh, terminology there, Oak. Here, predecessor means the person who comes before you. Yeah, predecessor and successor. Successor, that's the one you're looking for. Because I. I there, there was, it was just like, that was, uh, in some ways, that was, that could have been one of the hardest, uh, stones to get, because it was hard for Thanos to get that stone from Doctor Strange, and it looked like it, it could have been impossible for Hulk to get it from the Ancient One, because she did like that, that, uh, astral plane, like, <laughs> knock your through. ass to the plane. <laughs> Yeah, man, like, oh, my God, if she if she could do that to him, it's like, she could do that to, like, really anybody that doesn't have, like, comparable powers that. So, yeah, that was, that was one of my favorite moments. She willingly gave up that for the cause. Like, she started to really believe. Mm, she, she she's, she didn't want, she wasn't going to do it no matter what, then then he said, uh, then why did he give it to Thanos? And that was what, uh, that made her like, wait, he did what? Yeah. <laughs> that got her attention. <laughs> she trusted enough in Doctor Strange, his judgment. Someone she she'd never meet, she'd never actually met herself. I yes. add at this but point. She knew, but she knew who he was and what he would be. She said he would he was the best of us. He would be the best of us. Yes. So actually as far as benevolent characters in the MCU, people think about Captain America, maybe Vision. Maybe Doctor Strange is up there too. As someone who's like uh Oh the thing is the funny thing I is at the beginning at the beginning of that movie he's a freaking conceited jerk but like yeah. and she like, and she even shuts him out like she says no get lost i won't teach you well carrots and sticks man you know that's yeah what it took. yeah this, this he needed discipline but he had the potential to become what he did so nice and he's honestly one of the strongest currently existing characters in the mcu Behind, uh, behind Captain Marvel, of course, and uh. Thanos. Well, a Thanos with the in, with with the Infinity Gauntlet at the very least. I'm I'm not sh I, I'm I'd be curious to see how Thanos would stack up against Doctor Strange without the Gauntlet. Well, Adam isn't fully in the MCU yet. He just got teased at the end of Guardians Volume Two. For those of you who don't know, I'm, you guys Adam know who Adam Warlock. Warlock. Yeah, I know the name. He is the, he is hands down the absolute most powerful being in uh, in uh, the Marvel verse right now. From what we've seen, like they just, or do you mean like even outside of what we've seen in the in the movies? Well, I mean, we only saw him in a casket in at the end of Guardians Volume Two. But just just him being mentioned, like yeah, he is yeah. the he is the most powerful being in existence right right now, in 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 all of the Marvel verse. Okay, 
I don't. Well, at the very least, the most very, the the most powerful hero, because it'd be kind of boring if he didn't have somebody that he could go head to head against. But he's basically like the. Uh, like you're having trouble with somebody, let's call Adam. What was the deal with uh, Gamora at the end? Did she disappear with Snap for the second Snap? We don't know. Like, like that's that's been a that's big question. Funny. Like, did she get snapped with the rest of Thanos's army from the past, or did she not? I, I'm betting uh -huh. on not, but we'll see what happens. We always assume. <laughs> uh, I mean, at this point, there, there's, there's a lot to assume on that because we just don't know at this point. Yeah. I would say she's still in it. The, we're I mean, we're going to be learning a lot at Comic Con this year. Hand, like, absolutely, like they they have to because they also because they have to announce the order of, that the new movies that we know of are going to be released. Mm -hmm. um, possibly even announce a couple more movies for phase four. For phase four, um, and we we don't know pretty much anything about the. Uh, well, all we know really about the Disney Plus series are their names. Like we have WandaVision, we have Falcon and Winter Soldier, we have Loki. I guess that's the name of it. We're not. I guess like, but there's also supposed to be a Hawkeye series too that we don't yeah. know the name of that, um, and we don't know when or where any of those are set. Uh, we also don't know like where in the this upcoming timeline where following because they're kind of doing what they did with Phase. Phase 2, which was, uh, Phase 2 didn't end with Avengers Age of Ultron, it actually, it ended with, uh, Ant the first Ant-Man movie. And then Phase 3 isn't ending with Avengers Endgame, it's ending with Far From Home. So, Far From Home is the official ending point of Phase, phase 3, and then going into Phase 4 is, like, who's going to be the jumping off point? Mm -hmm. We do know we're getting the Guardians Volume 3 somewhere down the line, but we don't know when because Gunn is currently doing Suicide Squad right now. So we're go we have to wait until Gunn is, is finished with Suicide Squad before we get Guardians Volume 3. There is a possibility that Black Panther 2 will be the first one, but there's also a possibility that it'll be the Black, the Black Widow movie. Um... Basically, we don't know. There's a lot of stuff that it, that could be the opening point for this. Mm -mm. Interesting. And that's what we we just have to wait till Comic Con for to find out all, all all the details for all this all these things that we know are coming, but we don't know when, and we don't know the det any details about them. Right. Be running out of stuff to talk about with this. Now, I wish we had like a list to go down, like if we had made a list before. Um, uh, there's a deleted this. scene with uh, the 13 Reasons Why actress that was supposed to mirror oh, the I point. Heard about that. that was supposed to mirror the point when Thanos did his snap and saw child Gamora. It was supposed to be a a grown-up version of Morgan, his daughter, where uh, she says, basic, where she basically says, I forgive you, thank you for sacrificing yourself for for all of us, for, for everybody. Uh, it's okay, type things, you know. Um, but basically they cut it because apparently it confused test audiences because they're there, there was no attachment to an adult version of his daughter that was never in the movie. Right, because this is the first time we see his daughter, so it just makes more sense to have her as a child, and it's way more personal. Well, Okir, you did see the... Uh, we, we talked about the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer, 
together. Like we, so we know the multiverse is a thing, and if uh, mis and if uh, Mysterio actually is from where he says he is, that explains away the whole Captain America thing. He created. He went down into. He went into a different timeline, and then he crossed over right when he knew. He right when he knew uh, he left from the other world to go return the stones. I mean that that we can explain that away right now, based off what we know from Far From Home's trailer. We'll probably know, learn more in the movie whether or not uh, Mysterio is being a con man and deceiving Shield. But as a point, um, uh, when we. F one of the time, first times when we see Morgan, she's wearing a, a Iron Man-ish helmet, which then, which at which Tony says, "Where'd you get that? Like it, it was, it's an anniversary present for your mom." And then she, he goes on to say, "Not like she ever wears anything I give her anyway." Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that turns out to be the helmet Pepper wears in the final battle in her full rescue armor. You know, there was this one sequence in that last big fight where it was just like girl power. All, all the ladies of the <laughs> MCU and they were like surrounding Peter Parker. I think I, I think yeah. it was related to that. Yeah, that was seemed very deliberate. Unfortunately, Gwyneth Paltrow's contract as Pepper Potts ends with Endgame. We don't know whether or not she'll renew her contract, but it seems like she's not planning on it. Um, but hey, you know, money. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure if they offered her enough money to do, come back and do like a rescue movie, probably bring her do bring their daughter back. But there's uh, there's a couple things in the Tony. Tony's funeral that uh, that, that harken back to former to past uh, Iron Man movies like the lone teen standing in the in the crowd he's actually the kid Tony, that helped Tony in Iron Man 3 uh, the little kid you know that brought Tony into the garage and stuff and then at the end of the movie you see that Tony sent him a bunch of new tech and stuff and God, I don't remember that uh, he's, he's, he's the little kid but anyway um, then also uh, Happy is sitting with uh, Morgan and he's like it, uh, she, she's moping obviously her dad just died um, and he asks what she wants and she says cheeseburgers and that makes Happy choke up and says, uh, I'll get you all the cheeseburgers you want. Your, your dad liked cheeseburgers, too. I'll get you all the cheeseburgers you want. Because mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things Tony asked for when he came back from being trapped in a cave for months on end was, I want an American cheeseburger. That's the first thing he, <laughs> wants, he's, he, wa he said he wanted. Uh, but yeah, I, I love the girl power scene, honestly, in the final battle, where you have stuff like Valkyrie, Rescue, Wasp, uh, the, the, the female Guardians, uh, you had, uh, you had Nebula, you had, what kind oh, of so, so are? many names, I, I'm, I'm bad with names, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm worse. But yeah, you had all you had all these uh, all the females come in for for that for that final rush trying to get the gauntlet uh, to to s away from Thanos. Hey, it's such yeah, just big relay race. <laughs> the uh, most important like relay race like, in in the in, in the history of the universe, right there. <laughs> like relay race cross with like uh, a, a, football a, a game of getaway. Play. Of keep away. Football play with just laterals, <laughs> throwing the, the balls back and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the most important relay race slash game of keep away in the history of the universe, right there. <laughs> now, uh, now that I think about it, uh, when they got the gauntlet, okay, they have the gauntlet. Who were they trying to give it to, to use it? 
I don't like, remember. Because just think about it, because Hulk is kind of busted. Would they want to give it back to him and see if he could try to use it again on his other arm or something? <laughs> like, I, I, I honestly don't remember where they were mostly, trying to take it. It's mostly keep it away from Thanos, but it's like, because... Maybe Thor. Maybe Thor could use it. It's these people. People. Someone with like incredible. Uh, Captain Marvel could probably use it. You know, just someone that's like incredibly like superhuman. Ah, right. They were trying to get it to Ant Man in the quantum tunnel. Thank you, Okir. Oh yeah, yeah. They were trying to get rid of it, basically. Send it to where okay. Thanos can't get can't get to it. Um. That it, but when you said Thor, and since we're talking about the final battle, that reminded me of a very funny scene where uh, Captain America's wielding Mjolnir, then all of a sudden he gets Stormbreaker, and uh, Thor's wielding Mjolnir, and <laughs> Thor, uh, Thor comes up to him and says, no, you don't get that one. Give me that one, you take the little one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's mine, you take the little one. <laughs> uh... Well, to be fair, Thor did kind of risk his life to forge that one. True. Yeah. I also like how the entire movie Thor is just trying to be opposite. Like, he has no interest in being, like, the ripped superhero. He just wants to chill. He beats him. People have been calling him Fat Thor and stuff like that. Personally, (laughs) the the name I gave him was uh, Thor Lebowski. Yeah, Thor Lebowski. Because <laughs> everybody, everybody was making the big Lebowski comments about how he looks and stuff like that. I'm like, how has nobody called him Thor Lebowski yet? Right. Because <laughs> it, it fits. It really does. And he looks I so like... much like the big Lebowski, too. Yeah. He looks so really much like did. the dude. I like when uh, they're out of Lebowski in the movie. Um, like, he, straight up, like... Like, there were probably tons and tons of people watching this movie that, like, kind of looks like the dude now, like, sort of <laughs> yeah. washed up has been, and then he actually calls him Lebowski, and it's like, big Lebowski exists in this world. They know, they know about him. Uh, it, it, and there, there's, some, there's a lot of funny scenes in this, despite the, the grim overtone of a lot of, a lot of what's going on. Oh, yeah. Gamora couldn't believe that she fell in love with uh, with Star Wars there, and she was like, I fell in love with this idiot? And it was like, <laughs> and it was like, it was either him or the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. I like that. Ugh. There were so many good moments, so many Easter eggs, and just... Uh, one of my favorite scenes was when they went back and stole, and, uh, Captain America stole Loki's staff. The whole, uh, them getting into the elevator, him getting into the elevator full of, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Hydra agents, and the whole, uh, Hail Hydra thing. Uh-huh. And, the, and, and, and then they, they just let him have the staff, and he just walks off the elevator grinning like an idiot. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> I love how Captain America is literally, like, the nerd of the group. Like, he's so just, like, innocent. And, like, even, like, when he's fighting past Captain America, like, that past Captain America is such a fucking derp. Like, you're not. You're Loki. You're like, dude, no, I'm not, man. Like, just chill. <laughs> uh, and then the whole, uh, I can do this all day, and Cap, Cap just rolls his eyes like, ah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Because he used to say that all the time. <laughs> uh huh. So I was like, he didn't really like being on the receiving end of that line. Funny. Uh. Interestingly enough, the whole reason that whole Hail Hydra thing worked was because that was still when Hydra was still undercover in Shield, and the only way he Cap would know about that would be if he was part of Hydra. So it makes sense as to why they let him walk out with the staff because it would only make sense because he would he he had he has to be part of Hydra, right? right. There's no other way he would know to say that. <laughs> it's like uh, they're probably thinking like but they turned the captain to like really <laughs> They'd be like so confused like 
he's yeah and on this we didn't even know that what <laughs> Uh, especially since the person he said it to is a fairly high up in Hydra, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I yeah. he he was probably both very confused and very pleased. I'm sure. Yeah, that's what I looked like. But the the the, the shit eating grin he had on his face when he walked off the elevator with the staff was 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 so funny. Uh. Yeah. All right. Anybody have anything else that they want to talk about? Any specific scenes or bits or Easter eggs they wanted to point out? I don't know. I think that's about it. Just kind of purged it all after not being able to talk about it. <laughs> it feels nice to be able to talk about it. I mean, we we could have talked about it previously, but I wanted to respect the Russos' call for silence on a lot of these things. Unlike about the five million YouTubers who started publishing content literally the day before Endgame launched. Oh God! Like literally the day before Endgame launched, I was seeing videos of ending ending of ending of Endgame explained and stuff like uh. that. Like what? While RDJ is no longer in the MCU, what? I what think about Robert that? Downey Jr. Maybe? Yeah, I know that, but what, oh. what, what, what you talking about? There are others that have worn the Iron Man suit. This is true, and honestly, I'm thinking we might see... Again, I don't know the kid's name, because he was... I didn't think he would be important enough to remember his name from Iron Man 3. I thought just it was just a sweet in, sweet <laughs> moment or whatever. But he was there and it made and it's making me think what if he becomes the next Iron Man? I don't know. Probably not. But also like if, if 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 Gwyneth Paltrow does come back, there's a chance that we might see a rescue movie. There's also a possibility that Morgan Tony's daughter could also take up a Iron Man esque rescue esque suit as well. So that's true. <clears throat> and then you also have a bunch of poss other possibilities, like they could go the whole Iron Heart route, which is where the young black woman becomes Iron Man. Uh huh. Um, there, there's many other possibilities. Basically. There, there, there is a chance that we will always have a variation of Iron Man going forward. It will probably and most likely will not be an Art Robert Downey Jr. version of Iron Man or the Stark AI that we were talking about earlier, where but because he's done with the MCU, he had his poignant moments. He had his he he, he he's he's happy with how he went out. And it's like he's stepping away. He's making room for other people, you know. Yeah, he's been yeah. in it for eleven, 11 years, years since the beginning. Mm. Eleven years, and not just in his own movies and in the Avengers movies. He's made cameos in other movies, like Spider Man, for example. The end of the the event, the ending, the end credits scene of the Incredible Hulk. Had I had Tony Stark had Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark in it too, um, and it I'm sh I think he's been in other ones too. Like even if it was just his voice, I think he was in Ragnarok or something. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but like when he was like yeah. on an intercom in like he was on a speaker on a spaceship. I, I think he might have been like might have done that. Like when they were trying to like leave a planet. Uh, yeah, leave, leave the planet. Space. Yeah, but it's it's he's done and he's enjoyed his run and he he's been very humbled and he's been, by, by how loved his character has been and how his life has turned around significantly since he became 
Tony Stark, but he, he's ready to move on, and he is happy with how his character's arc finally ended with Endgame. Mm -hmm.